Horoscope 101, happy Sunday. I am the last one to do a video every single week, except you didn't get me last week. I'm sorry. I was in New York, as you can tell from my regular channel, Lunaria Claire. I posted lots of videos from New York, and that's all I talked about for like three videos. So anyway, I won't get into that, but I was not here last Sunday when everyone did the crazy animal, possessed animal, stuff like that. Um, I loved that. I knew what I wanted to do for it. It was just by the time I got back into town, there was just, it was going to be way too late in the week and we were already in a new topic, but I will briefly talk about what I would have picked. And that was Anaconda, the first one. Um, I know that Paul did, I think, Curse of the Blood Orchid. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm trying to remember who did what. But um, I love the movie Anaconda. I think it's that perfect kind of creature feature of the new era, uh, cheesy fun. Um, I love Jennifer Lopez in it. I actually like her as a serious actress. I'm not too much of a fan of, like, romantic comedies. So it's, you know, I don't really care about those, like, made Manhattan and all that but I like her in some serious movies I liked her in enough I really liked her in the cell and so I think what she act, she's an amazing actress at Selena she was so fantastic in that so I like her I don't really like her music or how she is in her personal life or anything it's just I did like her in Anaconda and the whole movie to me is worth it for the one scene where the Anaconda eats the John Voight character and spits him back out and he winks at her I mean that is pure creature feature corny fun right there and worth seeing the whole film for. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get into this week pretty quickly. Um, this week was witch slash witchcraft, and everyone has picked some amazing stuff. One of my favorites, of course, being Ross doing the craft. I love the craft. I think it was it was such uh, so indicative of the 90s and how um, you know goth was really in back then. I know when I was in high school, I loved that movie. So I just wanted to touch on that really quick because I love the craft. Um, so I had to really think about what movie I wanted to do this week, and I wound up choosing a movie from 1960, a black and white Italian in a film by Mario Bava, and that is Black Sunday. Now, um, I always used to call this movie Black Friday because, <laughs> I don't know, it's just that or my, and I remember when I was younger, you know, I've only seen this movie once, and it was about 10 years ago. Let me get comfortable. Okay, and it was about 10 years ago. Um, I, it always reminded me of an ice cream for some reason, Black Sunday. Anyway, this movie has so much atmosphere. Wow. You know, like I said, where I hadn't seen it in about 10 years, um, it, it's creepier than I remember. It's cooler than I remember. I was probably watching it on Turner Classic Movies one weekend and was hardly paying attention, but this movie really, really got to me uh, watching it again today. Um, now, I'm filming this on Friday, but I'll upload it on Sunday. But um, I absolutely loved this movie. Barbara Steele who kind of got to be known after this movie for a lot of movies like this, um, is absolutely stunning. Her eyes are kind of, um, kind of shaped far apart on her face and it makes her have a very unique look, but in a very beautiful, stunning way. Um, yeah, like I said, it was from 1960. What it is, is it takes place um, a few centuries ago. It, when it first starts, you're in, what is it called? Moldavia? Moldavia. Okay, I had to look that, look it up. Um, and you, they're basically going to persecute a woman and her paramour lover or whatever for witchcraft slash sorcery. You find out that the, the guy that's kind of overseeing that is actually uh, her brother. Her name is Asa, and she's going to be executed for sorcery. And how it's done, I mean, this is going to start off the movie so it's not really a spoiler. I hope this would be enough for to motivate you to go see this wonderful, wonderful film. Um, it starts off pretty gory. She gets branded in the back with the letter S and then she gets a mask put um, on her face that has spikes. It's basically like an Iron Maiden except it's only just a mask and this crazy like looking executioner dude with this huge hammer comes up and literally like hammers this thing into her head and it is like, whoa. And then there's a, a shot that is just from straight on and it kind of just goes back when the blood is kind of coming down and it, it is gory. I mean, it was shocking for 1960, at least in my opinion. Um, and it was, oh, it's so fantastic. Um, it jumps after that two centuries uh, and you're in the 19th century by that point. And she has a doppelganger. So Barbara Steele is actually playing two characters. That's Katya and then the, the sorceress of uh, Asa. And she goes from kind of playing a more innocent character to, you know, then she's the witch who they, she actually get, without telling you too much, because I really want you to go see this film. I hope that talking about the, the first scene is enough to make you want to go see it, because if you haven't, it is totally, totally worth it. Um, 
The dubbing on it is not that great, and I kind of looked up as to why. The version that I'm watching, I actually rented this today instead of just, I didn't, I don't own it. The dubbing kind of is bad with, like, the mouths and the voices and stuff like that because on Turner Classic Movies, an article that I was reading talks about that most Italian films around this time were actually filmed with no sound. They went back and did the dubbing. So even if you saw, like, the Italian version, the dubbing probably was not going to be perfect. Now, I think Turner Classic Movies has maybe a version of it that they the dubbing is a little better but my version the mouths are off a little bit but that just adds to me to the the retro factor you know it's black and white this is not a new film this is going to seem a little older but it, you know it's not from the 40s or anything it's from 1960 so I mean it's a little more modern but um you know very different from a lot of the new horror films or even just the craft that I was just talking about but wow talk about the shadows I know I've talked a lot about the atmosphere. I, I can't say enough about it. I thought the acting was great. It was very creepy. You know, when, when uh, Asa kind of gets brought back to life, she still has, like, the holes in her face. And so it's kind of gory. And I, I just, I can't recommend this film enough. I feel like I have kind of forgotten about it a little bit. And rewatching it today, it just brought it all back about how this is probably one of my favorite films from that era. It makes me want to go watch all of his stuff. Now, I have looked into him a little bit, and I'm sure a lot of other people have seen so many more films of his than me. I want to now watch the movie. I don't know if, if let me know if anyone else has watched the movie Twitch of the Death Nerve. I had talked to James about that today to see if he had seen it, and he said no. And it's apparently one of his more gory um, films, and it was a little more shocking. And I would love to see that. So if anyone has seen Twitch of the Death Nerve, please let me know. I would love to know if it's pretty good because I'll just go buy it and and check it out. So uh, I can't say enough about this film. This is the last in the Witch Witchcraft series this week. I think this coming week we're going to get you know backwoods crazy redneck psycho horror so James will be giving you one of those tomorrow I'm not sure what I'm going to pick yet but I have an entire week to figure that out so I always can just kind of <laughs> you know pick something and okay no one else did this I'm gonna do this one so I hope it was this was an interesting film if you have not seen Black Sunday please go check it out and I will see you next Sunday